commanded to answer Esther, Think not with, thy, with thyself that thou shalt escape from the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall the, their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I want you to focus on one word from that passage. Time. Children, you're not going to pray, sit down, please. Time is what we're going to focus on tonight. And we're going to break down 5784. But we need to talk about time. We're getting ready to cross over into a new year. One year is going to be done for us in our chapter in this book of life that we're living. So we are living in an extreme time of transition. Pastor Devin Wallace calls us Kingdom Esters because we are living for God's kingdom for such a time as this. It's very easy to miss out on a lot when you are reading these scriptures in the book of Esther because you are unaware of the time in which you are living. If you are unaware of what the time in which you are living in, then you won't know the action that you should take. If you don't know that you are supposed to be present for something, then you won't show up, will you? That's why these doctor's offices have appointment cards. If you're like my office, we have calls, texts, and appointment cards. Emails, too. You get a call from me twice a week. If you don't take note of that appointment that you have scheduled, then you're not going to be present. That's why we have several group chats going on in this place. And that's why we have group chats for ministries. And that's why you have me and Brother Ernie. We always make sure that you're in the know. We make pretty flyers. We keep planners. We work hand in hand to make sure that you all know when there's a service going on, when there's a conference going on. We keep the bulletin board updated back there. We're not tooting our own horns. But it's very important to take note of where you're supposed to be. Amen. Many of us are missing divine opportunities because we are ignorant of the time. We are ignorant of the season of the kingdom of God that we are in. This year that we are about to cross over into, God is about to shake up time. We are stepping over a threshold. Does everybody know what a threshold is? Everybody knows what a threshold is. We're about to step over that threshold where we are about, about to experience not just human time, but eternal time. Eternal time, which is God's time. God is tired. He's tired of excuses. I just don't have the time. Come on. Let me tell you something. God is not bound by time. Amen. God is not bound by human time. Come on. You ever heard that saying, I'm living on borrowed time? We don't have a meter on our arm that tells us when we're going to die. God is the author of our time. Amen. Amen. He can call your number at any minute. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. So God is not bound by time, but we have put limitations on God because of our agendas. Come on. The best thing that my mother ever did while I was under the care and her authority was dragging me and my sister to church. Every time the church door was open, my butt was in a pew. Whether I went kicking or screaming, which I knew better than to go kicking or screaming, because it wouldn't be just her that would get a hold of me, it would be Uncle Larry that would get a hold of me. <laughs> then, if being in church Every time that Pastor Gordon had church, wasn't enough. We loaded up every week, y'all. Mm -hmm. In Uncle Larry's van. This is before we had a church van. We loaded up in Uncle Larry's van. At one point, we had two or three vehicles. Yeah. 
You remember that? Yeah. We had two or three vehicles. Yeah. Didn't even have cell phones. We had walkie talkies. Yeah. Yeah. Walkie talkies. Yeah. And we traveled all over the state of Kentucky. We traveled down to Alabama. <coughs> we traveled to Indiana. We traveled to Ohio. Yeah. I don't know where all we traveled, honestly. But when I know we went, we went on assignment. And if we weren't in a service, or we weren't out singing somewhere, guess where we were? Pastor Larry's house for Bible study and prayer. Our agendas did not matter. And you know what? That was when I seen what true intimacy in a relationship with God looked like. It set the bar for me for prayer time and being about the Father's business. There was a time in my life where I put all of my other needs, desires, and flesh fits before God. And I missed out on a lot. Not just in the church house, but in my own spiritual walk. I missed out on a lot. I missed out on my appointments in the kingdom of God. You think about it, I'm getting ready to turn 33 next year. And I was raised in this from the day that I was three days old. Mom had me back in church. I had word coming into the womb where I was growing from a tiny little bitty cell to a baby. Inside the womb, I had word poured into me. I had worship poured into me. I had praise poured into me. You think about it. If I would have just surrendered my will and my time whenever God first knocked on my heart, where I would be today. Amen. Let's get back to Esther. We all should know her story. We all should. So let me ask you this. Do you think that Esther wanted to marry a complete stranger? Probably not. How many of us in here will be honest and say that many times God tells us to do something and we refuse to do it? How many of us move when he says move, but we do it reluctantly? God says, no more. He says, either you want me or you don't. He said, either you want the fullness of me or you want nothing. Some of you all, and hear me, hear me tonight. Some of you all are going to miss it. Some of you all are going to miss what's about to take place. Esther, she won a beauty contest. That is how she became queen. But she wasn't taken straight to the king after she won that contest. She was taken through a season of preparation. One year to be exact. In Esther 2, verse 12. Esther 2, verse 12. Now when every maid's turn was come to go into King Azarius after that she had been 12 months according to the matter of the women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished, to wit, six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with sweet odors, and the other things for the purifying of women. To understand the oils and the purification process, you have to know history. Meaning you can't just take this word and just read it. You've got to dissect it. You've got to see what was going on during that time. So what was happening during this time was Esther was going through purification. She was ridding herself of some things. You see, when Esther crossed over the threshold of the house where her and the other women were held, she and the other women had a table prepared of some good eating. Because back in those times, to be skinny meant poverty. 
And Esther was skinny. Y'all, she was an orphan. She was an orphan, and she was a Jew. Jews were not liked in that part of the country. So something had to happen. They had to fatten her up before she could go before the king. And it took Esther a year to prepare to go before the king. But we ourselves have prolonged our season of preparation because we refuse to sit and get fat on the word of the Lord. Come on. Well, here she goes talking about reading our Bible. Again. Absolutely. Absolutely, because God isn't coming back after a skinny bride. He's coming back after a fat bride, and you best be digging your word up. You must be pulling up a chair to the table because God said next he's turning up the heat with his word. Pastor Devin Wallace wrote at least a prophecy concerning next year about the word that's going to be released from the pulpits. She said a John the Baptist anointing is about to hit the churches in the year 2024. And she said, don't be surprised if there's doors closed on some churches. Don't be surprised if some people leave some churches because they can't handle the heat that's cooking in the kitchen. If you think the word's fiery now, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. And it's not just going to hit the pastors. It's going to hit them first, then it's going to trickle down. So you best be lacing up your bridges. Change them if you need to. Put you on some good boots. Because it's about to get intense. God said he's turning up the heat with his word, meaning he's about to separate the real from the fake. He's about to separate the tares from the wheat. He's about to unveil the bride. And you want to know why God told Pastor Stephanie to hold nothing back? Because some of us are ignorant of our season. I'm going to say it again. Some of us are ignorant of our season. And he's having to shake, literally shake some of us up so that we will quit looking at the clocks on our wrists and start asking God what time it is. He has sent by some Mordecai's your way. And I'm one of them. I'm one of your more chaos here tonight. And I'm here to say, hey, wake up. Wake up and get yourself into position. Because this is your season. And if you think that you can't handle what's coming forth now, out of this pulpit, the last three years has been a season of preparation. Because next year, in the words of Gage Dell, this place is going to explode. Amen. God loves you enough that he is making you uncomfortable. And he has to get you uncomfortable to get you to move into position. If you are looking for comfort, you won't find it unless you are in perfect alignment with the will of God. And I can guarantee you that none of us are in perfect alignment with the will of God. God is about to unmask to more of us in here, not just Pastor Stephanie. But are you willing to let him? So while we're talking about unmasking, let's talk about another thing God is going to do next year, and that is undo some things. Something happened in 2020 that caused the entire bride of Christ to miss a moment. We put a muzzle on our mouths. Amen. We shut the churches down. Thank God Pastor Larry did. He went along with the rules, Amen. but he did not close these doors. But some churches shut down, and the bride of Christ went silent. And the enemy came in, and he stole from our assignments. Amen. But no more will the bride have a filter. God is done playing with the devil. And you see, Esther lost some time. Esther lost some time. Go read her story. But you see, when Haman wanted all the Jews dead because Mordecai refused to bow, one person refusing to bow caused an entire nation of the Jews to be sought after. I was looking at my notes the other night 
over $19 million in our currency is what Haman put forth in theirs. $19 million for their heads. Esther lost some time because, see, she didn't know anything that was going on unless some of her maidservants come and told her. But she was in a year of preparation. So Mordecai, I had to send word. If you keep quiet, someone else will be sent. But your family will perish because of it. And God is saying that this year, if you want to stay in your comfort zone, that's fine. If you don't want to work in your assignment, that's fine. He will find some people out on the street and he will save them and he will put his word in their bellies. He will anoint them and he will send them forth to complete the assignment that you should have completed. You see, I've been doing some digging in my family tree. I've been doing some digging to see when deliverance was birthed in this bloodline. I'm trying to find out what generation was it birthed and why was it laying dormant for so long and why did a woman have to be birthed to bring it forth to completion. I've been doing some digging, and some of you all need to be doing some digging in your bloodline and find out where deliverance was birthed in your family. But God said, that's fine if you don't want to get out and work. He said, I'm going to raise up a remnant who refuses to bow under the weight of the assignment, and your family will pay for your dormant. You haven't faced intense warfare until you have rebelled against the will of God. There is going to be a great unveiling of the deception that has crept in. You see, the bride of Christ is going to be separated from the whore of Babylon. The unmasking of the dark and light is about to happen. It's going to be an epic year. It is going to be the final exodus. So let's break down 5784. It's getting thrown back at me from every corner. That's okay. So 5784, now I understand this is Hebrew. This is Hebrew. This is not me coming up with these numbers. <coughs> this is biblical. 5784. We are exiting the year 5783. And we are entering into 5784. Don't call me crazy until you let me get this out. So who are my number people in here? Number five means what in Hebrew? Grace. Number seven means what? Completion. Number eight means what? New beginnings. New beginnings. Now you're all getting it. And number four means what? Doors. But this is not just a year of open doors, but it's also a year of closed doors. And this is, is what about to happen in the year 5784. You're going to grab to the handle of one door to turn the knob to go in, and another door in the distance is going to shut behind it. You ever done that? Go through the front door and a door somewhere else closed because of the draft? That's what's going to happen in the spirit realm. Some of you have experienced this in your life. And some of you experience this in your spiritual walk, too. Let me remind you of the dream that I had. We were all walking down a hallway, and we were all tied together. And there was doors on each side. And we'd take a few steps, and somebody in the back would stop, and they would try to open a door. And all the doors on each side of us was locked. They would shake the door, they would try to kick it, and it wouldn't budge. Keep that dream in mind. Keep that dream in mind. God has came to some of you, even shown you open doors in clouds and visions and dreams. He's even told you 
about opening doors. He's giving you word after word after word. And what he's trying to do is to open a door and to close one. He's trying to elevate you to come up out of your pit and to go into your season of prosperity. He has told you it's time to elevate, but deception has come in and it's caused you to miss the moment. It's caused you to move away from your post in which God appointed you to be in. The deception of a Pharisee came in. And the Pharisee said, that's not of God. It's caused you to miss your moment. But can this prophet prophesy just for a little bit? That the year 5784 that God is going to give you one more chance to move. And watch me be ready. God is going to give you one more chance to move in this year. And when he comes and he hands you the key, God said he is restoring what the enemy stole from you. He's got a key and he's wanting to give it to you. He's wanting to give you the key. To unlock what the enemy has been trying to stop all throughout your walk. You see, I remember at the beginning of this year, we were in here for a night watch service, and God dealt out some keys. And the ones that received the keys, where are they? Come on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Where are they? What have you done with your keys? God's presenting us with one more, one more opportunity. One more opportunity. Get wake up. It's time to work. <laughs> One more time, and don't you dare miss this opportunity no more. If you haven't already opened your box, don't worry, everybody else is getting something too. But if you haven't already opened your box, open them. Open them and take out what's inside. God said, no more will a Pharisee come and steal seeds from your assignment. But are you going to move forward? Five, seven, eight, four. This is what it means. Five, grace. Seven, completion. Eight, new beginnings. And four doors. If you look up the number four in Hebrew, it looks exactly like a door. But what God is doing is God is granting the bride grace and strength to complete the work so that new beginnings can be birthed for the open doors that are going to open after the closed door shut. You got to get your hand off the knobs of the closed doors. Are you with me? Everybody's still here. Have I lost anybody? There are three specific doors found in Revelation chapter 3 and Revelation chapter 4. The first one, Jesus is talking to the churches. And these are the seven churches, which are the candlesticks that sit in the, before the Lord. And the other one was when he was talking to John. 
So the first door to open in the year of 5784 is the door of fellowship and communion. And I wish everyone was here tonight. But fellowship and communion. And communion and consecration have been on my heart heavy. And they've been in my spirit heavy. I have been torn to pieces over consecration. I even named my largest camel that I received during my birthing season. Consecration without even realizing that I had named it that. You see, I named it Gus Gus. And I thought that it was cute because Gus Gus is in Cinderella. It's a little mouse. He goes and steals all the snacks. But you see, I, I come across a, a minister, and Gus comes from Augustus. And what Augustus means comes from August, and it means consecration. But moving on. The door of fellowship and communion. In Revelation 3.20, 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. This door is where many of us have been and have experienced this. But it isn't something that is the most visited thing in your life. We hear the knock and we hear what we think is a familiar voice. But instead of opening the door to let the king in, we crawl across the floor to not be seen. Come on. We go and we crawl up the windowsill, pull back the curtain and the blind just a little bit, just enough to reveal who's knocking at our door. But we'll never open it. Mordecai is here. And I'm here to tell you that if you ignore the knocking any longer, then you're not going to hear it no more. You see, whenever I pull back the curtain and I'm peeking, and that person is still sitting there, I'm telling myself if I ignore the knocking long enough, then they'll just go away. But what I fail to realize is that this is a knock that I need to answer. This is a knock that I should desire to answer. Because when we open this door and when we let Jesus in, it, he does exactly what he says in his word. He comes in and he sits down at the table and he sups with us. Meaning that he feasts with <laughs> us. He prepares the table of some of the finest meat and bread and wine that you could ever have. Amen. We wonder why we miss things and we wonder why it's so easy for us to slip when temptation comes by our way. And it's because we won't answer the knock. We've got to open this door and we got to fatten up behind this door. This door will transform you. This door will transform your walk with God from a situationship to a marriage. I'm going to go there. We need to stop treating our walk with God like a part-time friends with benefits thing. Come on. A situationship, if you don't know what that is, it's a new term in the dating world today. And a situationship is where you only dine or go about the person when it's convenient for you or that person. That's what people are doing today with their walk with God. They're treating God like a situationship. They come to God and they dine with him only when it's convenient. Some of you all are like the Grinch. You got your own agendas. 4 o'clock, wallow in self-pity. 4.30, stare into the abyss. 5 o'clock, dinner with me. I can't cancel that again. I'm here to say that you better quit wallowing in your self-pity. And you better quit staring into the abyss. You're opening some doors if you do that. And you had better cancel that dinner with yourself and open up the door for King Jesus because he's outside and he's getting cold. He's getting cold. Quit being like the 
Grinch. Open that door. Kick it in. Kick it off the hinges so he don't have to knock. Guys, let me ask you something. Are you going to knock on your, your home door whenever you get home? No. You're going to use the key. You're going to unlock it. and You're going to go in. Amen. Right? Why is Jesus having to knock on the door of your heart? Why is Jesus having to knock on some of the doors of the churches? Why is he being like Charlie and picking in the windows? Inside joke, y'all. You had to be there. He's standing outside and he's wondering, hey, my name's on that building. Why am I not welcome in there? That person's God on Facebook. I'm a Christian. Why am I not welcome in their heart? You want to know why you won't open that door? I'm going to go there. I wouldn't be a prophet if I didn't rub some feathers in here. You won't open that door because Jesus brings about change. When Jesus enters the room, everything changes. Dark becomes light. Hearts begin to burn. You don't want to be changed because you don't want to lose. You don't want to lose some things or some people. Getting closer to God means some people in your circle disappear. Getting closer to God means that your speech gets cleaned up. You can't let those little cuss words slip anymore. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You can't talk bad to your spouse anymore. You can't look cross-eyed at some people anymore. You know, God has dealt out some names in this place. I thought mine was David and he told me no, that I'm Miriam. But some of y'all have not got the name God give you because you changed it. Come on, Lord. Come on. You're like Naomi. And if you don't know who Naomi is, read the book of Ruth. Amen. Naomi got bitter. Lord. She got bitter because things weren't going her way. Uh, she on. got bitter at God because God wasn't showing up like yeah. she thought he should. So after she disappeared for 15 years, and she finally come back, everybody went out to her and said, oh, Naomi, uh -huh. Naomi. Yeah. She said, don't call me that. Yeah, come on. Come on, preach. Where's my Bible readers at? What did she say her name was? <laughs> Bible study. Let's go there. Can't think I was going to put you on the spot. Surprise. you all to answer this. What did Naomi call herself after she came back?
Where'd you find that? Ruth 120, and she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call me Naomi, saying, Seeing the Lord has tested, testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. Oh, this sounds familiar. Sounds like some of y'all sad stories. Sounds like some of my old sad stories. Woe is me. I'm going to do exactly like the Grinch and wallow in it for a little bit. Let me just break down Naomi. Naomi, the root word is Naomi, and that is translated to beauty. Some of your all's names are translated into mighty things. They originate from mighty men and women of God. Their callings and their assignments were great. But because God isn't moving for you like you think he should, because God hasn't opened a door for you the way you think that he should, because your timing is not matching up to his, you've grown bitter and you've changed your name tomorrow. <clears throat> and you don't want your name changed back, so you won't open the door to fellowship and communion. Because when Jesus comes in and he starts flipping some tables over, he starts shaking some things up, your name's going to go back. But because you're bitter with God and you, because you don't want to lose your pride, you won't open that door. But if you don't go through with the door of fellowship and communion, then you will never go through the next door. Wow. I'm going to move on because. Yeah. The next door is door of Revelation. And this is found in Revelation 4. There is always scripture backed up to anything that happens in this place. But this door is also considered the door of the heavenlies. This door, some of you won't ever enter because you don't move past your flesh to experience the supernatural. In Revelation 4.1, John saw a door. After this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the, her, the first voice I, when I, which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you these things which must be hereafter. This was talking to John. What he was saying was, Come up hither means translate up to me. Come spend some time with me and let me show you some stuff. Again, some of you all will never go through this door because you don't believe in the supernatural. If you ain't realized, God is supernatural. Amen. And you weren't created just to be a being. You were created to worship a higher power. Here we go back to the basics. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> spirit and in truth. You won't move past your flesh to experience the supernatural. This door is where we see the elders in which we sing about casting their crowns. This door is where we see angels with eyes all throughout their being. This is where we see the animals and the beasts gathered around the throne. This is where we see the rainbows. This is where we actually see the throne in which God is sitting on. Amen. Some of us will never experience it. We'll never get to hear holy, holy, holy 
And I'm sorry, in heaven there's not going to be when I die, let me die speaking in tongues. It's going to be nonstop worship. So you need to turn your heart to worship. I don't like the slow stuff. Rapture drill. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. There's only one word that comes to mind. Holy. Holy. Oh, if that don't quicken your bones. If that doesn't make you want to do a two-step. You don't have to have an organ. You ain't got to have a guitar or drums to do a two-step. Whenever you got the fire shut up in your bones like prophet Jeremiah, just hearing the word holy starts to stir something. Some of y'all got to let your feet speak for you. Some of y'all need to come out of the pews. This ain't in my notes. Some of y'all got to dance that you're holding back. Well, I can't dance to a slow song. You see the door to the supernatural, you can't open. God has to open that door. And this door is not a door that you can go in and you can sit down and say, okay, I've been here five minutes. It's time for me to get up and go. Some of y'all need to lose your watches. Some of y'all need to lose your watches. This door is not a door you can go in and just sit and say, I ain't feeling no goosebumps. I'm going to get up and leave. Some of you are saying, I'm not used to this feeling. I don't want that. I'm not used to that feeling. What do you think heaven's going to look like? What do you think heaven's going to feel like? You see, this 
hear some of us that understand about the supernatural, some of us that have experienced the supernatural are going to experience a greater anointing. Oh, here I go prophesying. We're going to experience a greater anointing than what we've ever had before. Because behind this door, God is going to translate us up to the throne room. And while we're in the throne room, he's going to do just like he did with John. And he's going to deposit something into us. Hey, God. He's going to deposit a fire anointing. He's going to deposit eternal into our bellies. There's going to be, in the year 2024, for some of you, a greater presence of angelic. You're going to lay down to go to bed, and God's going to quicken your spirit, and you're going to get up and go to your prayer closet, and suddenly you're going to hear the door open, and it comes an angel. It comes an angel. Some of you, God is going to audibly speak to you. Some of you, your discernment is going to go to greater lengths. Because in this door, this is the realm where you will find out what time it is. Behind this door is where you're going to see the camels. Behind this door is where you're going to see the ships. Behind this door is going to be where you see the blueprints of your next step, of your next move in the assignment. You see, if God was to reveal it to us in the flesh, we try to overwork it. We try to cut corners. But behind this door, once we go through the relationship the communion, the fellowship with God, and we step into that threshold of the supernatural, God is going to start revealing secrets. Secrets are for friends. Are you a friend of God? You want to know why? Some of you even set and you question, God, why can't I hear why can't I see? <coughs> You're speaking to all these other people, but why don't you speak to me? Why would he reveal a revelation to somebody who is not a friend? He knows of you, but he doesn't know you. He knows of you, but he doesn't know you. The Pharisee has brought in lust. The Pharisee has brought in deception. And if you had been still away behind the first door of fellowship and communion, and you had been spending a little bit more time with God, the Pharisee wouldn't have been able to steal from your assignment. But God has not left you. God has given you one more chance. One more chance. I'm trying to be patient. I'm trying to... Wait upon the Lord.
We got one more daughter to talk about, but I don't want to move too quick. <laughs> Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Will you let me in? sign up here says repent. And that's not 
for a specific person. I didn't wrap that up there. The Bible says that a righteous man falls seven times. short of the glory of God. It's time to repent and it's time to pick yourself up and it's time to dust yourself off and it's time to move forward. It's time to let the past be the past. The old saying is let bygones be bygones. Let naysayers be naysayers. time to uproot bitterness and change your name from Mara to Naomi. Oftentimes, people want the harvest of the field, but they don't want the landlord of the field. People want to sit at the right hand of the Father, but they don't want to lay at his feet like Ruth did Boaz. You have to be submissive. <laughs> you can't be bitter and controlling. And be able to work in your assignment. He said the last three years have been pure hell for you remnant river worship. Everyone's names because you are tied to the pastors. It wasn't just their names dripped through the mud. But it was ours too. Jesus has already born. Body of Christ here, baby. God said that He is undoing. He is undoing what the enemy has said. He is undoing what the enemy has done. And He is wanting to elevate us up above all the nonsense. Lose your filters. Lose your filters on your mouths, pastors. For you have been called for such a time as this. Hear me, Moses. You are going to begin to experience mountaintop experiences. May the glory of God rest upon you just like it did on Moses. May your ladder be better than the former. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
bodies begin to line up according to the word of God. May they function the way that God has purposed them to function. May the spirit of the living God quicken your mortal bodies. Complete healing right now in the name of Jesus. Complete healing from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Right now in the name of Jesus. Get on. Get on. 